fanboy film nerd galaxy class spoiler review us directed by jordan pill who also wrote and produced this film this is a complete spoiler review obviously so spoilers ahead if you have not seen us i recommend you go see that before you get into this discussion these things are called galaxy class spoiler reviews for a reason and that's because these are very in-depth conversations as if you were having a beer with me at the bar or after the movie it's not so much a review as it is a conversation it is in podcast form we're going to go down each topic through the checklist and we're going to get through this one and talk about what i feel like is a very great film in the movie us we're going to start with the story if you're watching this you obviously have seen the movie i'm going to assume you've seen the movie so i'm not going to spend time talking about how the story takes place because you already know that because you've seen the movie so let's just talk about some of the aspects of the story that i kind of took in as i was watching it this film surprised me i am not a horror fan of slasher films or some of the more low budget films where people are just getting destroyed for no reason or or they're getting chased by somebody that really there's no reasoning behind why they're actually doing it outside of just gore violence sex nudity all that kind of shit that you see in a lot of slasher films especially growing up in the 80s and 90s as i did you saw a lot of the nightmare on m street sequels and uh, freddy sequels and the halloween stuff so horror films to me is they're kind of hit and miss i prefer horror films that have a little bit more of a substance to it as far as depth and uniqueness so some of my favorite horror films are films like the ring uh, and the remake of the ring actually and there's a few other ones in there like the texas chainsaw massacre um, actually, the Blair Witch Project is one of my favorites, even though, I mean, you look at it, it's, it still has this creepiness to it. And I, I like movies where the horror is presented in a way where it's not actually horror. It's more like trauma. It's a, it's a thriller more than it is straight up horror. So would I classify us as a horror film? No, I don't think I would classify it as a horror film. I think I would classify it as a film that has a lot of different genres all mashed up in one to present itself as a film that has a lot of layers to it and not only have a lot of layers to it but a lot of interesting layers that are very simple in nature but are presented in a way that it identifies with what we all know to be in life and that's what i like about films like this is where they take things that are tangible in life and they it in perspective so you can actually feel what those characters are feeling when they're going through whatever it is they're going through so when I see a movie like this I get excited because I know it's going to be presented to me in a way where I can fully understand why they're making their decisions why aren't they making their decisions what their motivation is what the protagonist motivation is what the antagonist motivation is all the side characters all that has to play a part for order for in order for a movie like this to succeed come across as being what the director the writer and producer jordan pill wanted it to be and i saw a lot of different genres in this movie from horror to suspense to thriller to comedy to action to mystery to just almost every single thing you can think of it had a very weird m night Shyamalan feel to it M. Night Shyamalan is one of my favorite directors and he has done these types of movies where you can almost feel that horror element in there but it's not fully a horror film. The Sixth Sense is a good example of that. That is a horror film, kind of. The Village, horror film, kind of. There's uh, uh, The Visit, horror film, kind of. Suspense, thriller, they kind of have these weird genreless feels to them which makes them timeless and I like that. I don't like films where so cliched and you know what's going to happen before it happens type deal i like twists in movies i don't want to always see where everything's going now i will say in this movie when you're dealing with things like equal opposites we've seen stuff like this in other movies but not presented in this way where you have a family of people dealing with another family that is exactly their equal opposite to the age to the look to how to how they move and to how they are as a human being they have a complete equal opposite from the woman the man the child the child girl the child boy that type of deal where it's just completely equal 
and that's what I think got so many people excited about this film. In this movie, I saw the very first screening here in St. Louis, Missouri, in my area for this movie that came out on a Thursday. The theater was fucking packed. Diverse theater. It wasn't just all African Americans there. It was just everybody was in here to see this weird, fucked up concept coming off of Get Out, which is another movie that I absolutely love. And I actually need to review that film. It's so good. This movie is doing something that I think a lot of the Bloomhouse films are doing. And I think this film was produced a little bit by Bloomhouse. I, I thought I saw his name in the credits. I have to re double check that. I don't have all my show notes here. But you're talking low budget, low production value, great acting, and in a setting that is going to make sure that no matter what this film makes in the theater, they're going to get their money back. But have people buzzing about it. The one thing about this movie i kind of felt like this was going to be a little bit more hit and miss than get out was because this film requires you to use your imagination a whole lot and if you've seen the story of the movie you know exactly what i'm talking about you have a group of characters in a house staring at their equal opposites and you honestly have no fucking idea what's going to happen and that's great the violence in this movie i thought was great as well i thought it was just that nice level where they were about to go overboard with it but they never just went completely overboard they still left things out of the frame so you have to make up in your mind what that actually looked like what the violence the extent of the violence what that actually looked like and anytime you have to use your imagination to figure out what something looks like the director has won that scene in my opinion because your imagination is always going to be so much more fucked up and vivid than anything he would show you on screen and i thought he used that effectively he used enough violence to get you to the point where you knew how bad it was going to be but he wouldn't show you everything there was a thing there was a part in the movie where the the girl the daughter was bashing in the head of one of the uh, the other uh, characters that were chasing him and you see the blood splattering you can hear the sound you can hear the bones breaking but they didn't show it could have easily have shown it didn't show it i love that there was a few other scenes where uh, Gabe, uh, Winston Duke's character, we'll get into the characters in a moment here when we're going down this checklist, turns on the propellers on the boat and it shredded this guy and you just see the blood splatter but you don't see the violence from it. You don't see the aftermath of what that looked like and I thought that was done pretty well. The violence was shown in extent when it needed to be there. Otherwise, it was backed off and let the audience use their imagination to fill in the blanks. One of the things about the story with this whole world in a world type of deal i'm pretty good at figuring out stuff early on in the story that's the only bad thing about seeing so many movies and me being a writer myself sometimes i can see twists coming way before it actually happens on so going into this i was waiting i knew there was going to be a twist somewhere and i'm sitting here looking for all the clues because that's how you get the twist you look at all the stuff that they're showing you and you start thinking in your mind well what if this and what if this and if it's either or that's the twist that kind of rhymed it makes no sense and that rhymes as well but that's what it is that's kind of how i figured it out and i figured it out literally early on in the movie when the little girl adelaide is walking around on the beach she drops the the apple the candy apple and she walks inside of the the fun house with the mirrors and she turns around and sees her equal opposite the first thing that popped in my head was wouldn't that be fucked up if what she saw in that mirror actually traded places with her and that little girl who was inside of that mirror well quote unquote we know that that wasn't a fucking mirror but what if she switched spots and this little girl went up there and they took home the wrong girl i thought that the moment and i saw that and i instantly knew i was right and i was it did not shock me at all when that was actually the case i saw it the whole time it really did not do a very good job in my opinion of hiding that i think anybody who thinks about it in that scene that's your plot and i really solidified that i got it right the moment the equal opposite adelaide shows up and she's sitting there explaining why she was motivated to come and try to kill her equal opposite adelaide the main character played by lapita miss beautiful fine lapita niango we're getting the characters in a second like i said but it was interesting to see her explaining a story and i'm sitting here thinking she is the one who was actually on the beach who walked into that fun house and was looking into the mirror not the one that's sitting over there i'm like it, it's it doesn't make sense for that girl to see what she saw and come out of there so traumatized where she can't talk it was very strange to me 
And there was some other things that were strange because when her mother was talking to the therapist and she was like, I just want my little girl back, you know, I, when is she going to start talking again? I thought that was interesting because when the equal opposite doppelganger Adelaide shows up, she can't speak correctly. And I was thinking, that's curious and that makes sense because the one thing that that little girl, when she traded spots with the, with the, the, the family girl, the girl who was up in the, the real world here, one of the things she would not be able to do is go up and talk about anything because they would instantly know that wasn't her little girl. So she would have to literally be quiet for a while and act like she cannot talk and she's so traumatized she can't talk to the point where they're like, well, why isn't she talking? And it would make sense. She wouldn't talk because doesn't know this girl's memories to that point. Now, they say that they do share certain memories, but this little girl didn't know everything. There are certain nuances that I'm sure she was a little frightened about. So she just said enough where it got her by. And after a while, they just accepted the fact that that was her daughter after this traumatized event. And she can kind of be whoever the hell she wanted to be. And because of the trauma, she's justified. And this is a smart little girl we're talking about here. A desperate little girl who did not want to be down in this underworld any longer and let's talk about this little weird underworld thing the one thing that did escape me as far as the story goes was how in the fuck does that work really the tether thing that they kept bringing up they kept talking about the tether how does the tether work is it she explained that it's kind of a tethering of souls where you're being controlled in a way or influenced in a way by the soul that is essentially your shadow the equal opposite of you and one is in hell while the other one's in heaven type of deal. It's almost like an angel and demon type thing, a yin and yang type deal, a balance that has to be balanced out or it doesn't work. How does that work? Is it different for each individual? Because if you look at it in a certain way, Adelaide down in the underworld, I'm going to call it the underworld because I don't know what the fuck that thing was, but the, when you go down the escalator and you get down there with this girl, she's looking at events happening. That's only in her world, I guess, her point of view, because... The other characters who were down there, the other people, I'm assuming they're living their thing and in their own world too. But how big is this? Is underworld, these underground tunnels throughout the world, is it extensive where every person on the planet that's born, there's an underworld that is built though for these people? When did it start? How would it have started? Because you're talking about human beings. We, we did evolve in a certain sense from being primitive into what we are now. So when did this start? How did it start? Why did it start? I kind of like the fact that I don't really know. I think that helps me with the story. I think I identify better with the story that way. And I don't think I have a problem with not knowing everything about it and leaving it some to the imagination. I actually thought at the end of the movie they explained a little bit too much about what was going on with that because it didn't make a whole lot of sense and it actually confused me to the point where I'm like, I have to go see this movie again, which I am immediately. I just think this movie was brilliant in a lot of spots, but there were other spots in here where I felt like the tone could have been tightened just a little bit as far as the story goes, because there are moments in here and I, and I don't have a problem with it as far as like, if you take a movie like Black Klansman, Black Klansman did a very good job, Spike Lee in particular, of balancing story narrative that is heavy with light frequently light light dark heavy light <laughs> that type of deal is like you just, once you get too heavy you bring it back you look at the marvel cinematic universe they do a same type of deal with their storytelling something to get really heavy you watch infinity war something heavy happens there's a joke in the next scene pretty much on cue just to lighten it up a little bit thought this movie did it very well but i don't think this movie needed it as much as some of these other films like Black Klansman, where it's a, a film that really is a, a more of a, a true representation of what we're living in now. It's something like Marvel, where you have children watching these movies and you don't want to go too heavy or you'll freak them out. This movie, I think, once it went dark, I think it should have stayed a little darker. Now, I'm going to tell you what. There were a couple of times in the movie where I was freaked out and then Winston Duke would say something or somebody would say something to make a joke and I'm like, whoa, you just took me out of that scene as far as how creepy this is. Not because of what they said, but the reaction of the, of the equal opposites that they're in the room with. I don't think they would have any tolerance or, for Winston Dukes joking around in the middle of this. I think your kids being frightened to death would stop you from making comments and jokes that really in a situation like that wouldn't even be possible. Wouldn't mentally or physically be possible for you to do in that situation. 
so it kind of took me out of it. It did. It, it, it lost its realism really in the opening because a lot of things just don't make any sense. <laughs> you know, and so uh, when it comes to why Adelaide walked off from her father to begin with, kids do that. But she was almost drawn into that place. And I know the tether in there kind of pulled those two together. And it does make sense, but at the same time, it set a tone in this movie where you're already knowing in the opener, this movie is going to follow certain rules that have nothing to do with the real world. Unlike Get Out, where Get Out is much more believable much more believable because that is something where you, it's not going to happen but you would definitely believe that could happen over what this could happen because towards the end of the movie when which was another dead giveaway when the therapy session was going on she was lining up the toys in the sand side by side and then later on you see that everybody's holding hands i that was another thing i had figured out i'm like okay that's the little girl it's a dead giveaway it's like right there slap dead in your face uh, so i went literally three fourths of this movie i went through it knowing the twist of the movie so i was hoping i got a little bit more at the end onto that twist which i didn't but the movie is such a strange strangely put together puzzle that you keep waiting for the puzzle to break apart and it kind of does at the it's like at the end of the puzzle you were missing just a couple of pieces or and it just needed one more little thing to just make it all come together it almost got there. I just don't know if it stuck the landing right at the end. Now I'm going to go see it again. I might be wrong about that. I'm not entirely confident in that statement. Cast. We have Lupita Nyong'o as Adelaide Wilson. Winston Duke as Gabe Wilson, her husband, in the film. Elizabeth Moss as Kitty Tyler. Tim Heidecker, or Heidecker, Josh Tyler. Shadai Wright, Zora Wilson, who I liked in this film. Evan Alex jason wilson this cast i love the lapita winston couple there i liked them being a couple in this movie it was also cool to juxtapose them from this in this movie from black panther since they both were in that film winston duke is amazing i really like him he's a really good actor he's fucking hilarious lapita nyong'o is one of the most beautiful women on the planet she is an unbelievably great world-class all-time great actress she can play anything it is amazing what she did in this film in my opinion everybody had to play their role in this movie especially when you're going to have heavy scenes severely emotional swings against yourself i was impressed especially with the children actors i am not a proponent or a person who always likes the acting of children they were hit and miss to me especially in films like this where you're going to have people who have to get emotional and cry on cue, try to make you laugh, try to make you sympathize with them, and not take you out of the scene because their acting is so unbelievably horrible that it's unbelievable what they're saying. At first, I thought they were going to do that. I wasn't bought on them in the car scene. The, fir the very first time you see them, I was a little nervous. But as the film went on, my God, those two kids were really good for what they were asked to do how weird this film is and what they had to play essentially two different roles they impressed me i was blown away by it i don't know if they would work individually but as an ensemble and when i'm sure been on set with napita and winston helped a ton because those two are just unbelievably good i think that helped them especially having a girl and a boy so i'm sure shaddai talked a lot with napita Lupita, excuse me, and Evan talked a lot with Winston and got a lot of direction. And obviously Jordan Peele knows how to direct actors, any type of actor or actress he seems to be in his comfort zone with, especially in his element of writing and producing the film. I mean, he knows these characters better than anybody. He, he created them. So he knew what he was looking for and he got what he was looking for. And I think he did a very good job. I also think it could have been a little bit hit and miss with the friends that they meet up with and their two twin daughters, um, the, the, the Tyler couple, uh, uh, Kitty and Josh, was a little nervous about them. I thought they might break us out of the film, but it seemed like every time we got introduced to a character, I was kind of like, oh, shit, don't fuck up the continuity here. The movie was, was doing good. They end up enhancing it. I actually started, ended up liking uh, the Tylers. They were fucking hilarious. And it was strange, too, because you're not expecting to see anything. So outside of the original family's doppelgangers 
you're not really thinking, wow, we're going to see equal opposites of this family too? So if there was a twist in the movie that did shock me, it was that. Because I was not expecting that. I was not expecting to see anything but something that was kind of like The Strangers, like a home invasion thriller is what I was expecting with this. And that's not what we got. We got a worldwide event Holocaust zombie-like film. And that can only work if you have a decent ensemble at its core. But this movie kind of got a little weird because, again, when you start talking about M. Night Shyamalan, one of the things he's really good at is taking actors and actresses and getting them to act a different way than they normally do in other movies. Tarantino is another good uh, version of that. Martin Scorsese is really good at that. Um, uh, Steven Spielberg is really good at that. You get a lot, of, a lot of those directors who can get an, an actor who's set in their ways and does things a certain way and get them to act completely different and unexpectedly. I don't think a lot of people knew Lapita could do what she did in this movie, playing these two. I know I was shocked. She went further than I... I knew she was going to be good. I didn't know she was going to be that fucking good. She she blew my mind. And the kid actress, um, Shaddai, she's really good. I think when she keeps, if she keeps acting, you might be hearing that name a lot going in the future. She is really good. I mean, no, is she, I'm, I'm projecting her because was she perfect? No, they're kids. So you have to give them a little bit of a break. And this is some fucked up material. I mean, this is some weird shit that we saw in this movie. Us is not the type of movie where you just sit back and like, and, and, and just take it in. And it's like, okay, let's just have some fun, you know, some light. This is a heavy film at times very strange and disturbing i mean i i had to sleep i had to sleep on this film and come back to it in the morning just to kind of think about it for a while because it is disturbing and i like it i like it a lot i like very disturbing weird films like that so it worked on that level so the characters yeah i i I liked it and again i wish we could have learned a little bit more about underground tunnel stuff with all the people down there and how that tethering really works because i i felt like that was something that maybe should have been tightened up a little bit at the end but at that point i after everything that happened in that movie i'm not sure it would have been beneficial to the movie all that much uh because it got so crazy towards the end you know when you start talking about the little boy with the fire uh, his face is burned it's almost like a cautionary tale for that family or anybody who was dying in this movie from the equal opposites it was almost like a weird takeover over a movie excuse me not of a movie but of a situation in a movie where there's like a worldwide hall a, a worldwide epidemic that's going on and we don't know how this is going to play out and no this movie doesn't need a sequel but i just feel like it was in the film with a bunch of people holding hands all across the world in a line it's like okay well where is this gonna go you know how is this <laughs> where does this go how did it gonna what's happening here because it, it's just one of those things where it's like if you're an astronaut and you're on the international space station you know i mean wh- is, where's your eco office is gonna come so how how far does this go and i guess you just have to find out but all in all i think the cast worked very well and again one of the things i think helped this film so much was just having just world-class talent like Lupita and Winston and even Elizabeth and Tim uh, those when you have people who embrace the story and willing to do anything in the movie as these characters and just put it all out there you're going to be okay and especially in this type of material where you have things that don't make a whole lot of sense I guess it takes unique actors and actresses to be able to pull that off because it was some very strange stuff that these characters were asked to do not only as their main characters but the equal opposite characters as well they were just asked to do very weird things like the the weird screaming out cry that they would do that's almost zombie like and you had like the little kid with the with the fire with the mask on you had the the other little girl which is very super creepy they're walking around with these scissors but you know it was just all so strange and i can't imagine what <laughs> how that was like on on set every day looking at some of these people and and having a the to put all this together i take my hat off to jordan it was a very interesting idea and i'm glad they greenlit it and they got this one done because it was definitely something unique and different and really needed right now it just reminds people there are original movies and stories out there that you can make you don't always have to do a remake of everything or a reboot of everything you can get new ip you can make new stories there are new stories to be told 
this was a very Twilight Zone, Alfred Hitchcock type deal mixed with some M. Night Shyamalan action. It was very strange, but we need more stuff like this. We need to see some new stuff, some new ideas. No matter how crazy they are, you can see here that no matter how crazy you can write characters, there's always another level of crazy to go there and new and interesting ways of getting a premise to work in pretty much any genre. And we saw that in this one where you have these characters interacting in a multiple genres all under one title. And I think in that aspect of it, I think he nailed it with the story. Jordan Peele, a lot of people didn't know he had this type of talent in him. New material that is not only unique and interesting and encompasses so many different genres, but also had the ability to direct actors get the best out of his actors no matter who he's working with now he has been privileged enough to work with some incredible talent which will help any director but again he had children in this movie playing basically two different roles multiple children different races different ages he is on point he knows he knows his characters he knows exactly what each shot needs and what he's trying to get out of each shot and i think he works with what he has or what he doesn't have sometimes very well he does a lot with little and that goes a long way especially in hollywood if you can do things for less and make two three times as much money as it costs to produce your film then you're on point and he's not only writing he's producing these films so if he keeps this up he's going to be around for a very long time He's going to go down as one of the greats. Now, still early on, people said the same thing about M. Night Shyamalan when he came out with The Sixth Sense and Onto Unbreakable, that he would be around for a long time. He has been, but he went through almost 10 to 15 years of being what people called a director who was on a decline and very close to not being relevant at all. My favorite M. Night Shyamalan film is Unbreakable. And what I liked about that film was how simple it was, but it had a bigger ideal and there was a twist in it. There's no difference in that than it is with us, where you have a simple ideal with a bigger world attached to that simple ideal. A lot of it you're going to understand, a lot of it you're not. But I've already touched on some of the elements which makes him such a good director, especially some of the stuff that he showcases in this movie. And that's, again, the ability to be able to direct talent, but also the ability to be able to make a movie that is something we can say we haven't seen before. Now, I know a lot of people are going to go into this film and say, yeah, a lot of that stuff I have seen before. It didn't do anything for me. But I guess that would depend on what type of person you are as well. Because again, this movie is not just a horror film. It's a suspense thriller. It has a lot of elements in it that, depending on what scene it was, it was almost like it was a completely different genre, depending on the scene and where they were in the story. And... It was very interesting to me in that because you didn't know what you're going to get from scene to scene. When each scene, there's something new and fresh, pieces it all together a certain way, I should say. Because I think that might be a detriment as well because you're not getting a consistent tone that's going to keep you at a certain level throughout the film. But that's also where you get into cliched shit. When you get people in this comfort zone of, I know what's going on. I feel like I can predict a movie. It's a good movie. You, you know what? Fuck it. You might as well just say you know what let's make this next scene after this scene be completely different in tone in genre all the above just make it as different as possible now he is probably writing it that way but you can also tell that he allows his actors and actresses to do what they need to do in the story as far as at libbing you can tell you can tell that some of the lines winston duke was saying was completely what he wanted to do and when you're doing these lower budget films and, and now, this is not a severely low-budget film. There are some things in here where I was like, yeah, you spent some money on that. You spent some time on that. But at the same time, when you have a low, lower-budget film, you also have more time to shoot. So, uh, I shouldn't say you have more time. We don't know exactly how much time they have. But when you're doing a simple scene with two people talking in a bedroom, you can do a lot with that scene. You can allow your actor to, to give a few takes in of just whatever he wants to do so you're going to get a lot more dailies where you can have the freedom and be like you know what we can piece this together quite differently and that's what this movie felt like just felt like you know what, let's just take the best of the dailies that were interesting and let's just keep the ball rolling fuck it we're taking the best scenes and putting them in the movie the movie is what it is 
and if it's the writing you know so if that's what he's doing i like that that's something i would do as somebody who would like to do a, a, maybe a couple films before i exit this world that is something i think i i like gravitate towards all my short films i've always shot like that i've always shot simple scenes and just filmed a scene that's going to be in the movie for like a minute and i would take all day to shoot that one minute and just do it completely as differently as possible in each scene and then i would just take the dailies and just cut it together and that would be what that scene was no matter what the tone was and it ended up being very interesting a lot more interesting than when i stuck to my written material my screenplay and then try to just force it into the camera and it just doesn't work that way anybody knows anything about directing or films what you write doesn't always land up on screen you're dealing with talent very good talent and sometimes they know your character better than you do and you wrote the fucking character <laughs> you know because you're allowing these characters you're allowing these people to walk away and uh, learn to understand their character and especially when you have characters in this movie who are playing two different types versions of the same person essentially you're asking these people to go away and think about stuff and they're going to come back and they're going to think about this one character more than you have because you're thinking about so much more it doesn't always happen like that but i just felt like with someone like jordan pill he would be cool with that because that's exactly how he came up he came up being like hey look i'm just gonna just do whatever the fuck you know and it works. I think that works very well. I think that's a good director. I, I, I like Ryan Coogler does the same thing. And as an African American myself, it's good to see that because we do do that a lot you know, in our films and even in life. You know, we just, you know, it's not to say that white directors don't do it. It's not um, so much of a race thing, but it's just cool that these two guys are coming up in a time where diversity hopefully is starting to filter into these types of uh, films and projects that you know ryan kruger had black panther for christ's sakes in the mcu one of the most influential films in the mcu it's my favorite film in mcu and you have this guy jordan pill who typically somebody else would do a film like this but he's doing films he's writing producing and directing these things and i think it's cool because you don't always get african-american directors directing things like this or black panther so it's you know we're not typecast if we can only do period films and films based only on our culture like john singleton or something like that it's n that's not what they're filmmakers they can make anything you just got to give them the fucking opportunity the writing in this film i thought again was a little bit hit and miss at times only because of the stuff that is narrative driven because like i said i do believe the actors and actresses were allowed to ad lib and do some things that they pull from each day or different cuts of the film and thought that this the material that ended up in the film worked better the writing is still decent though i don't feel like i don't know i haven't read the screenplay but the screenplay seems like to me it would be very straightforward screenplay and then when you get them on set, you're going to fill this thing up. So the writing in this movie, I feel, maybe could have been better as far as the narrative goes. Because, again, I do believe there are certain scenes where the actor or actress were doing things that kind of took you as the viewer out of the movie, or at least the story, a little bit because of the tone shift. Especially when you have a heavy scene and in the middle of that heavy scene you're having winston duke make a joke it can be a little weird it kind of pulls you out of the scene a little bit and you lose your tension that you had that was building up to that point that's not for everyone because a lot of people in this movie were laughing the entire time because some of the premise in this movie was a, so out there that i think a lot of people thought it came off as funny because I saw this movie and there was a lot of people jumps. There were some jump scares in this movie. A lot of people screaming. I heard a lot of people scream out loud in this movie. But there was a lot of people also laughing their ass off in this movie. In scenes where people were getting the shit beat out of them. Because of the tone. You were allowed to kind of say, hey look, you can laugh at certain scenes in this movie. Because Winston Duke is laughing at it. There are certain scenes in this movie. Winston Duke is walking around and he's literally like you are you sure you're in this situation because you're awfully calm my brother <laughs> it's one of those things and it was just a little weird in certain scenes but i think in some weird fucked up way that actually is what i like about this movie is that it's not so cliched and that it is the writing is weird enough in tone 
that you can get away with having a light sentence in a fucking most intense scene you've ever seen and there's somebody making a joke right in the middle of that scene i think that's kind of what he wanted obviously he jordan peele made this movie he wrote this movie so he either wrote that in there or he thought that was the best fit for that cut of that movie and no i don't think this movie would have worked if the tone was just straight crazy the entire film you know like a texas chainsaw massacre but at the same time if it was pushed more to the comedy side i think people would have taken it as a spoof film of certain of a m night Shyamalan movie or something you know it, it's just towing a line of so many different genres and tone that i felt like the writing itself had to be very simplified in nature to be able to pull this thing off the way he wanted to pull it off because the writing there isn't a lot of nuance to it it's so straightforward it's very simple there aren't a lot of scenes in this movie where people are just going on long monologues i think the longest monologue we get in the movie came from lapita as the the equal opposite ex explaining basically a uh, backstory and exposition type shit well i guess not exposition but backstory mainly uh, about what her motivation is i think the motivation side of the writing is where perhaps he jordan might have messed up a little bit because again i saw that twist coming literally in the first act of the movie right after that little girl sees that equal opposite i figured it out and then once they went to the therapist i completely knew the entire twist in the movie the entire time so everything that happened when they, that family shows up and everything i knew that that little girl was already switched i knew that was the other girl i knew that was the girl who was on the beach not the girl who was down there in the underground i knew that in the entire film so i saw this movie unlike and i talked to people after this movie about this and a lot of us like i didn't see that comment i'm like well what did you think did that make the movie that was like oh my god it shocked me and i'm like okay because i wasn't getting any of that from the movie i looked at that movie completely different than a lot of that audience in there there were some other people that said they caught that too i'm it's not like i'm some kind of fucking uh you know person who can figure these things out and i'm the only one who can do it obviously there's a lot of other people who figure that out but their experience of that movie if they did is going to be completely different than the person who did not and i'm going to go see this movie again with my sister who is her favorite genre is horror and i can't wait to sit there and see if she gets it you know there's a lot of mo people out there who watch movies that i can't wait to share this movie with just to see the reaction to this because you can still enjoy it if you figure it out because i enjoyed it immensely even though i knew i had figured it out i actually got to the point in the movie i was hoping i was wrong <laughs> that's how much i had figured it out so i was kind of disappointed i was like no that's exactly what i thought happened so I, th that scene where they where she tells you it was kind of a throwaway scene for me because i already knew that I, I mean personally that's why i said at the end of the movie maybe he could have cut out more because there are some scenes in the movie where I, I figured it out anyway. But that doesn't mean it's not good writing. It just means maybe he could have tightened it up enough on screen. Not so much the writing, but transitioning that screenplay to actually cutting the film and being like, maybe we shouldn't show so much up front. Because showing that little girl seeing the equal opposite so quick in the movie, it put it, it, I never would have thought that it had I not seen completely what she saw. If I didn't see that little girl and we just had a reaction where she sees something but not that little girl and then the family shows up, that movie would have been completely different to me. But the fact that she's walking up and she sees this little girl with a back turned to her is supposed to be a mirror. It's like, well, she's not looking in the mirror. The girl's back is turned to her. So that is a real girl. Regardless if it's real or not in reality, in her mind, that is a real girl. And, and if that's what they're presenting, you have to take that as the audience and be like, okay, well, I'm, that's a real girl. She believes that's a real girl. I need to believe that's a real girl. And if that's the case, then chances are that's what is the worst case scenario that would happen in that scene. And I thought it would be the equal opposite would trade places and go up and leave that little girl wherever the fuck she was. And that's exactly what happened. Because that would have been the worst case scenario and it would have gave motivation to the girl adelaide who had walked from the beach into the that mirror house it gives her motivation to come after the doppelganger the equal opposite because there was wrongdoing to her otherwise it wouldn't make any sense for this girl to see this girl 
this girl turn around, smile at her in a weird way, and then years later, come after her with motivation like, I'm going to kill you for what I went through. It's like, what the fuck does she have to do? She just saw you in there. She didn't do anything to you. So what is your motivation for coming after her? So in that regard, I would say the writing lead a little bit to desire as far as screenplay being translated to film in regards to timing and when you show things. Because again, had he not shown that little girl in that scene, I never would have guessed that. I only guessed that because I saw that little girl and then in the in the scene with the mother talking to the therapist, she said that the little girl couldn't talk and I thought to myself, how convenient. The girl who switched with her comes out and is so traumatized she can't talk so she doesn't have to explain anything to her family in regards to as far as memories or, or just nuanced things that would make her mother believe, no, this is not my little girl. I don't know who this little girl is, but this is not her. Almost like that movie Changeling with Angelina Jolie. I was thinking, are they going to go in that direction? Again, this movie hits a lot of different genres. So, yeah, as far as writing goes, I wish that that writing foiled in a way or tainted by the way that the film is cut. Because I feel like the writing was better than how it was presented in the film as far as editing. Because I think the editing in the film could have been a little bit better. Production. Kind of liked it. There were some things that I liked a lot. The underground tunnel thing was beautiful. I liked the shot of the, the bunny rabbits in the beginning of the movie with the title card and the credits. Thought that worked well visually. Production design, when you're going to Santa Cruz, this film happens a lot on the beach, the production so much doesn't matter as much as how the film looks. And we'll talk about that in a second. But just production-wise, it was kind of bland. I felt like maybe some of the areas in the movie could have been a little bit more creepy as the material that they're in. Sometimes like a house is a character in a movie, a car is a character in a movie, a town, a city, a place, a thing, something else environmentally plays almost like the character in the movie, which is why a lot of movies like like Mad Max. Mad Max plays well, but the world of Mad Max is a character in itself. Titanic, the ship, the Titanic is a character in itself, and so to speak, uh, Star Trek, the the USS Enterprise is is a character in in a way. You know, if it's a planet, it's things like that. There's no memorable things in this movie as far as visually production wise, where you're like, okay, that you know, location wise anyway, I should say. Where it, I I feel like maybe there could have been some different locations that would have made this movie fit a little better. Excuse me, a little better. But I think production as far as costumes go, I liked it, and. I'm talking about the equal opposites. The the red with that glove on the right hand and the scissors, the gold scissors, and how creepy they looked, almost zombie-like, post-apocalyptic, weird, like, epidemic, tragedy, worldwide event-looking stuff. It just was very good. I thought all that worked very well. I liked the red, and that it's just a very weird look. And I liked it. I thought that was cool. And again, very simple. Not over the top. Very simple, but works. It's a classic look. It'll be a look that people will wear to Halloween. It's something like I'm going, I, I like to draw a lot. That, that's a, that, I, I loved it. I was already looking at that that uh, costume and being like, oh, wow, that's going to be fun to draw and do paintings out of because it's an iconic look now. It He did a very good job of coming up with something that was original and looked different and so simple that anybody can find something similar to that and cosplay with it it's just really nice to see something like that you know because we get into horror films everybody knows what freddy's claws look like jason's hockey mask michael myers weird william shatner mask on and on and on you have things like chucky to what he wears everybody knows this stuff when it comes to horror films you always have your classic horror look hellraiser um it's just with this movie that's something else I wasn't expecting was to have like a certain look that identifies with this movie. So whenever you see that, you automatically know that came from us. And I liked it. I thought that was cool. I wasn't expecting to have something that was kind of tied into it costume-wise to this movie. 
that has relevance. There's a story behind why they are wearing them. Because that was another thing. I'm like, why the fuck are they wearing it? Why is everybody wearing red? What's the significance? And at least he tells you that in the movie. I thought that was cool. I did like the fact that she got it from something. The look came from something. Everything on that costume had a reason for being there. And I thought that was cool. It wasn't just... Like Michael Myers, come on, dude. Why do you have to wear that fucking mask every time? Jason, why do you have to wear a hockey mask? Why can't you wear a goalie's mask? It's uh, Freddy, you know, why don't you take off that fucking claw and get yourself a chainsaw? Oh, wait a minute. Texas Chainsaw Mask. Leatherface has a chainsaw, so you can't use that. So, you know, so it's like everybody has their thing, but you always wonder, it's like, why do they always have to have that? Why can't you, you know, you know why can't you have something else? It's just one of those things, you know? So, it's cool, you know, because, like, this is the type of movie that I think in the future, people are going to want a sequel from it. I I don't know how much it's going to make at the box office or how many people are going to like it. It's the first weekend, but there's no bone. No, the, people are going to want a sequel to this movie in some capacity. I hope we never get one. I think this movie is fine the way it is. I don't think this movie needs a sequel at all or a spinoff or anything. I don't want to hear any more about it. I think there's too many franchises in Hollywood right now, and you don't need a franchise with everything. This movie, in, if you're going to do a sequel, I would be perfectly fine with saying, okay, well, let's not make one for like 10 years and have Jordan show 10 years later after this event happened, and then you get into it. Or show it, don't, don't go before this story and start doing prequel stuff like The Conjuring. Just continue the story. Because... Again, and this is all going back to the production. The production is what it is. So if you start fucking around with it and making it too big, then I don't think it's going to work. I really don't think it's going to work. They almost got too big for me production-wise in this movie. I liked it better in the smallest settings. And once they started getting outdoors and into the broad daylight, I felt like it started opening it up a bit. And I didn't identify with the movie like I wanted to at that point. I kind of lost reality. And it wasn't until she went down the escalator to uh, see her equal opposite again uh lapita's character when she went down there to meet her equal opposite that is when i got back into the movie but that little scene when they go up into the daytime and they're out on the free ray and it's, and it's still or out in the street I, actually where the car was on fire and the little kid was about to blow up the car i thought that is the, the world opened up and I was thinking in my mind, okay, well, how big are you going to go with this? Because they showed the shot of the beach, and, and which was a beautiful production shot. I liked all the beach stuff. I thought that was beautiful, but it looked even cooler with them holding hands up into the beach and holding hands going through the um, as far as the eye could see. I'm like, well, this movie really did open up a lot. But I, I kind of wish it was just on a smaller scale and just stayed kind of claustrophobic, like a movie like Split or something like that, where it's just one not so much just stuck in the same house i had no problem with them going to the other house because uh, i did like the the set changes and being on the boat there were different locations i thought worked well but they were in a small proximity once they started expanding it i felt like the movie was kind of ballooning out of control even for itself and it was kind of losing me a little bit on that but that's nitpicking it really wasn't a big deal i thought the production design of this movie was standard for hollywood when it comes to horror and uh thrillers and suspense movies like that so I, I just thought that maybe some of the production, especially down that escalator, when you get down to that underground, I wanted to see more of that, and I was hoping we would see more of that, and and if you're going to expand anything, expand that world. I wanted to see more of these tunnels and how they were built, and like what do they look like, and how far do they go, how do they, how do they survive down there. That part of it, I wanted to see more of production-wise. Everything happened up top, especially when it, when they got away from the houses and they were just out in the open. Not so much. Uh, I, I feel like I, I I wished all that shit would have happened underground because I thought the more interesting stuff was the underground stuff, and maybe we could explore that side of it a little more. I like the way Jordan Peele lights his movie. I like his sense of contrast and darkness to lights, but I also like his close-ups and the way he messes with again contrast with the close-ups and having people have raw emotion very close up onto the the camera onto the screen and framing things in a way where it feels almost as as if you're in the room with these people he did the same thing in get out where everything's framed as if you're kind of just standing there the way that every every time you see a scene in one of his films it almost feels like you're standing there and i noticed that when i was watching us when we're in the house 
and it's again going back to the production thing where I felt more with them when we were in the house you kind of feel like you're just standing in there with them as if you're either with the opposite the equal opposites or the uh the original family i thought that was uh very impressive because that's the second time it, with get out been the first where i was watching a jordan peele film and feeling like i was in the movie you just are immersed in this world and he just frames everything to have people standing like close enough to the camera and the way that they look around and the way you would look up at somebody he just frames everything very well in my humble opinion I, to where i always feel like i'm in the scene with these people as if i'm sitting there with them and i like that because that's called immersion that's 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 a full movie experience when you can get the audience to feel like they're in that world with these people especially if you're going to start trying to freak people out and scare them and, and you bring them into a world that is horrifying and it's kind of this weird cautionary what if tale you want people to identify with not only the characters but the environment and everything that's going on in that story and the best way to do it is make it feel like that person's in that world with these people and i love that i think that's one thing i have to give him a lot of credit for is that he does some shots where a lot of people would not do in films like this a lot of close-ups at weird angles he doesn't sit on shots very long and that's another thing I like about him. It's not like a Tarantino thing where he'll find an angle and just sit on it. He's always making that camera move. There's always, when, when they go to a different angle, it's always just in this, the way he frames it and ed edits the film together, beautiful shots that he has. They're not all perfect. So it's not like he's just putting together this beautiful, perfect masterpiece. It's just some angles are just a little off or they're, tilt it in a certain way or he'll sit longer on some sh certain shots and then cut on other shots where you think that should have been long. it's just a weird dynamic I i'm just very interested in how he puts his films together and what's the mindset behind them because he has a very unique way of putting his projects together you know and shooting them and with the lighting i, I just even with the blood it the way that he dealt with the violence and everything especially like blood splatter and all that everything just is perfect it just looks good it it just looks it's not over the top sometimes the blood doesn't even look real to me especially watching this movie you it just some of the blood looked like it was sticky and it didn't drip quite right and on the wall it was like lighter than a blood would normally be it was just it's almost like a, a low budget fan film at times and he's having fun and i like that because you can tell that he's having fun making these movies and if he's not having fun how the hell are we supposed to have fun with them so i like that i like the way he shoots his films lighting wise i really like it he doesn't go overboard with anything but he just you can still tell that you're watching a film but it's realistic enough shooting wise when he's shooting this film where you feel like you can identify with all the colors it's not too overly saturated or desaturated i love the way he uses his colors the way he puts in like what's on their shirts and stuff like that He's just very unique the way he puts things together as a total package. They almost come off. I love graphic novels. And a lot of times, I, especially in this movie, Us, I felt like I was reading a graphic novel with some of these shots. It just was shot like almost like it was a comic book. The way he would frame a person in there and then it go to the next frame, go to the next panel, that type of deal. It was just pieced together. And I was thinking, I'm like, this would make an awesome graphic novel if this... I would buy it right now if he turned that movie into a graphic novel it just would be an awesome read visually perfect for something like that and i thought us was or excuse me get out was the exact same way i felt like when i was watching it it felt like a graphic novel that's a plus to him because graphic novels in a way make you feel like you're part of that world as well they just they just draw you in there's no audio there's no music or nothing so they have to visually draw you in i think Jordan visually brings you, invites you, and pulls you in to his worlds. And in Get Out and Us, I both times I felt like he did an outstanding job with that. The music in this movie was great. You got to hear a lot of 1990s, 80s hip hop blended in with a natural score that actually took some of the riffs and, and melodies from some of those hip hop songs and incorporated them into the score. And I thought that was brilliant. I love that. As a hip-hop fan and a film score fan, I absolutely love that. I thought that was perfect for this movie because it blended the classic Alfred Hitchcock 
horror themes, which you hear a lot in this movie. There are a lot of things where I was like, that sounds like Twilight Zone, some Alfred Hitchcock action. But you hear these songs playing, and they're playing in these scenes where people are being murdered. You hear these hip hops and like, you know, fuck the police is in there. And you have your I have five on it playing, and you hear the music later on incorporated into the fucking score. It's just insane. Going to buy the soundtrack, going to buy the score. <laughs> I liked it that much. I thought that was amazing what he put together soundtrack wise for this movie. I thought it was perfect, spot on. The sound design in this movie is actually really good too. There were some sounds in this movie. That, yes, they were used as jump scares, but the sound design was on point. When they bang on the doors, you felt that shit. It hits you right in the chest, just freaks you the fuck out. You can hear. Only what he wants you to hear. And again, this is going back to that M. Night Shyamalan sound where he does the same thing. Where you things seem like they're quiet, but if you listen carefully, there's a lot going on. With a whole little. Or I, as, at least I should say as little as possible. There would be things in this movie where it'd be quiet and then when the loud comes in, it's loud. And I like that. Again, contrast. You go down to the depths of nothing to the biggest highs of highs. And... I like the sound design in this movie. I thought the sound design plus the music and score overall set the tone for this movie. The opening score with the bunny rabbits with the title card and the credits. And he's doing that long uh, pan away from these rabbits to show the whole the whole shot, the frame of the rabbits in these cages in the frame. I thought that was amazing because that's something that a lot of these movies don't do anymore, which is has opening credits plus the title card. They're making you sit and listen to music, setting the tone for what's to come. And I thought that was pretty cool because that music in this movie was very weird. It was a, And it's, why not? You're dealing with very weird material. So why not have really weird music and sound design? And I thought, hey, you can't get much better than that. I don't know how he would have done the music and sound in this movie any differently. I'm assuming there was a ton of different ways to play around with the sound and music in this movie especially with the the score but i just like that it was kind of that old throwback afro hitchcock sound and you have this modern hip-hop at least up until the 90s anyway and there was some some modern stuff in there obviously but if you want to call the last 20 30 years modern okay but you have that in there with your classic horror sounds from the 50s and 60s I thought that worked well, and you can tell he's a, a film nut job because there was a lot of things in this movie where it was very old school, before his time type of deal, and you can see lace in this movie all over the place, all kinds of Al Alfred Hitchcock shit and Twilight Zone, uh, Outer Limits kind of stuff, especially with the way he frames these, the, the characters and the way that they're looking at people before they do an action or the way he it just was perfect the way he did it you can just tell he's a film nerd and i appreciate that because i'm a film nerd and especially of the classics especially of the horror classics i love that shit uh i loved outer limits and twilight zone were my two favorite shows growing up when i was a kid and i couldn't get enough of it and i just saw so many things i grew up watching in this film and i really had to tip my hat to jordan with that because it's good to still see people incorporating old film techniques that worked back in the day in the now. Tarantino is one of my favorite directors because he does stuff like that. And how good was it? In my personal opinion, I believe Us is a very good film. Bordering on great. I say bordering because I think there are some elements in this movie that could have made it an outstanding, unforgettable film. But there are also some things in here that we've seen before, and I thought that it could have been a little more tightened up as far as editing. So people who are in these films who can piece together plot points very easily, you got to make sure that you don't have them figure out your movie too early due to an editing. And I feel like that's what, for me, keeps it from being a great film. Now, when I originally walked out of the movie, I thought it was great. And I haven't thought about it and slept on it. I think it's just very good. In a way, I think Get Out is better, but I don't know if I would personally compare these two films because they are so fundamentally different that not really fair. That's like comparing Unbreakable to The Sixth Sense or Goodfellas to Casino. They're kind of the same, but they're not. So 
that doesn't mean either or is bad or good. It just means I don't know if I could compare Get Out because of the subject matter. But if I had to pick two films to say, okay, this is the movie you are stranded with on an island by yourself, which one would it be? I would probably pick Get Out just because I think it's a more flawless film for him. Concept wise, I like Us better. I like that weird shit. I always have been a person who enjoys a good balanced story, especially when it comes to things being balanced as far as equal opposites, good and bad, light and dark, that kind of stuff. So premise wise, I should gravitate more towards us, but better film wise, I think it's Get Out. But this is a very good movie. You don't have to see this movie in the theater. I recommend you go see it, but I think Depending on what audience you have, they might take you out of the story a little bit. Because again, you did have people in the theater, at least when I was in the theater, it was packed place with all different types of people of all ages, all races. And there were people screaming in horror in the same scene as people who were laughing uncontrollably. So I was just shocked by that. It was very strange. And I don't blame them because I found myself kind of right in the middle. I There were certain scenes, even though I was like, that's fucked up. In my mind, I was laughing. <laughs> it's just the truth. I just didn't do it out loud, but I completely get it. There were some scenes where I was like, this is visually fucking insane. And it's hilarious. Wasn't supposed to be. And I just, well, at least we don't know that. I don't know. This movie was an emotional roller coaster because there are some scenes that would creep you the fuck out. And there are some scenes that would have you laughing out loud. Nothing wrong with that. So all in all, I would say it's a fun movie. It's definitely a movie. I think everybody, especially if you're a fan of a horror drama, a horror drama, horror drama, suspense thriller, stuff like that weird, creepy Twilight Zone, Outer Limits shit black mirror shit i think you're gonna love this movie and i definitely think you should take your closest friends and go experience this in the movie theater probably a movie i think needs to be watched twice again that's why i almost hesitated to watch this movie again before i reviewed it but i just could i like to get these reviews out the first weekend so it just i'm not gonna be able to see it to the next week so I, one viewing but i'm pretty sure what i, I looking at it again considering i already knew the plot the entire movie the next time i go see it i'm going to be looking for things outside of that just focus more on like the background little hidden if there's any little clues and messages and stuff just piecing together the story about the underground stuff the tunnel shit the people down there i want to know more about that and i want to see if there's any clues or anything in the movie that further explains that or or, or butters that up a little bit more but i would say it is a good movie and definitely deserves a watch it's not bad at all i think it's very good like i said if there's any bad in it and i always put is it very good or is it very bad because just because the movie is good doesn't mean it doesn't have its issues the bad part about this movie is that it is one of these types of movies that is so creepy and weird at certain points where it makes you feel uncomfortable and i don't know if a lot of people like feeling like that when they go to the movies again this is one of those movies where you're all in with this concept or you're not at all because it doesn't pull any punches with how weird it is and how freaky creepy it is and how obscene and absurd it is the violence is very violent the language is very language if that makes any sense like you're gonna get it all the only thing that you didn't see in here is any tits and ass, and I think that's pretty good too because we don't need to see that in this movie. We just need to see what the characters are doing and what they're motivated by. If you want to see a weird concept, there are other movies that do weird concepts a lot better than this film because, again, I think this movie, if you want to talk about one bad thing, I think it dropped the ball in this most important aspect, and that is that underground tunnel society shit. That stuff was interesting to me and we didn't get enough of it if i had to say anything bad about the movie if that is my one complaint is that i wanted to see more and know more about that underground area and about those people and it, I, because everything that happens up top is kind of a it went from it's not a just a, a film about a girl who's going back to get revenge on another girl for what she did to her but it's also does other people who are going and doing exactly what she's doing to their own equal opposites 
So it wasn't a personalized story. It was kind of a revolution story that started with one person and branched out to other characters and everybody was affected by this one girl meeting somebody who is her equal opposite in a in a fun house of mirrors and the next thing you know there's a world event happening where people are in red jumpsuits with scissors holding hands all across the world that's crazy that's not as interesting to me as what the fuck was going on down there in those tunnels why it was made how it was made when did it start what is the extent of this what's the end game that is what i think the bad happens because we just don't get enough of that and i think if we just had a little bit more would have made that main story a little better it may because there were some things in the main story when they're all up there getting people are getting slaughtered you're waiting to see there has to be a better explanation for it than that we just following her because she tells us to do this so if you had a little more backstory with that maybe that holds up better but Without that, we're left with a simple story that took a lot of turns and twists. A lot of those twists and turns didn't lead anywhere. So if I had to say that, that's my only bad about it. But is this movie bad? Fuck no. Go see us in theaters. And I'll see you guys on the next one. That'll do it for this fanboy, film nerd, galaxy class, spoiler review. Take care. Have fun at the movie.